the universe is a huge place. Its dimensions are so colossally large that it is difficult for even the most experienced astronomers to imagine. It is a place full of stars, nebulae, galaxies, black holes, planets, moons, asteroids and many other types of astronomical objects. However, in the midst of all that cosmic immensity, there is a place, a small corner of the universe that we can consider our home. The cradle where everything began for our species, that place is called the solar system. What is the solar system? The solar system is a planetary system. A planetary system is made up of a star or sometimes a group of stars and the celestial bodies that revolve around it, that is, that are under the influence of its gravitational field. Whether they are planets with their respective moons, minor planets, asteroids, comets, or star dust. In the case of the solar system, the star that shapes the entire planetary system is the Sun. What are the parts of the solar system? Most of the solar system, like all other planetary systems, is empty space. However, around all that space there are a multitude of objects influenced by the Sun's gravity, which make up the solar system. How could it be otherwise? The Sun is the most important part of the solar system. It is located at its center, and all objects in the solar system are influenced by its gravity. It is a G-type star, also known as a yellow dwarf, which is approximately in the middle of its life, today about 4,600 million years old. The Sun is made up of three quarters of hydrogen and one of helium, it rotates on its own axis, around which it takes 25 days to go around. And by itself it represents approximately 99.86% of the total mass of the solar system. Due to their size, the next most important objects in the solar system are the planets, which we can divide into two different classes. Thus, occupying the internal orbits of the solar system are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. These are the smallest planets, due to their position in the solar system known as inner planets and due to their solid nature of rock and metal, also called rocky planets. On the other hand, in the outermost orbits of the solar system we will find the outer planets, much larger and made up of gas, which is why they are called gas giants and ice giants. Thus, in order of their distance from the Sun we find Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Apart from the planets, five of the so-called dwarf planets are also known in the solar system. As their name indicates, they are much smaller objects characterized by having enough gravity to have acquired a spherical shape. However not enough to have cleared the vicinity of their orbit of other objects, which differentiates them from the planets. The asteroid belt is a region of the solar system located between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter that is home to a large number of small objects formed by rock and ice, mostly asteroids, which are believed to be the remains of a planet that never came to form due to the gravitational influence of Jupiter. More than half the total mass of the belt is contained in five objects, Ceres, the dwarf planet, and the asteroids Pallas. Vesta Hygia and Juno. The Kuiper Belt is a region of the solar system located beyond the orbit of Neptune. It is similar to the asteroid belt, but it is much larger. 20 times wider and up to 200 times more massive, and like the asteroid belt, it is made up mainly of small objects left over from the formation of the solar system. In this case composed mainly of water, methane and ammonia in the form of ice.
The Oort Cloud is a spherical cloud of objects that lie beyond the orbit of Neptune, up to a light year away from the Sun. According to estimates, this cloud could house between 1,000 and 100,000 million objects formed by ice, methane and ammonia that could add up to a mass five times that of planet Earth. Where is the solar system? The solar system is part of our galaxy, the Milky Way, a barred spiral galaxy that is approximately 105,000 light years across at its most distant ends. In its structure, the Milky Way, is made up of two main spiral arms, called the Escudocentauro and Perseus, and two secondary arms, those of Norma and Sagittarius. Our solar system is located in the Orion or local arm, which is part of the spiral arm of Sagittarius. The Sun, that is, the star around which the entire solar system revolves, in turn moves at 210 km per second within the Milky Way and takes 225 million years to complete one revolution around the center of the galaxy. It is what scientists know as a galactic year. Regarding our neighbors in the galaxy, to find another planetary system we have to travel at least 4.4 light years to reach Alpha Centauri. What are the limits of the solar system? Where does the solar system begin and end? Undoubtedly, this is a question that is not an easy answer. On November 4, 2019, NASA announced that the Voyager 2 space probe had left the solar system 40 years after leaving Earth. Its twin probe, Voyager 1, had already achieved it seven years earlier, in March 2012. According to the American Space Agency, the probes, both the objects created by the human being that have ever farthest from Earth, had left the aliosphere, that is, the space region that is under the influence of the solar wind and its magnetic field, and crossed the aliopause. An imaginary line that constitutes the limit of the aliosphere and in which the solar wind joins the interstellar medium and interacts with the stellar wind from other stars. How did the solar system form? Scientists have multiple theories that try to explain how the solar system was formed, however, one of the most accepted proposes that before the solar system existed, its place was occupied by a huge cloud of molecular gas that accumulated more and more quantities and density due to the low temperatures that prevail in most of the universe. The theory seems to indicate that at a certain point, either due to the gravitational collapse of this interstellar gas, or motivated by an input of energy from the explosion of a nearby star or supernova, the birth of a protostar. This protostar, that is, our Sun in its gestation state, continued to attract gas and matter, forming a disk of material around it and from which the planets would form. Subsequently, the protostar would reach a density and pressure sufficient for the nuclear fusion processes that characterize these stars to begin inside, converting hydrogen into helium within it, and in turn giving rise to the interstellar wind that cleared the orbits of the current planets of debris. During this entire process and from all the material that was not incorporated into the Sun, planets, moons or asteroids were also formed. As we said, this material formed a massive disk around the early Sun. Inside the disk were the heaviest materials, which joined together due to the same gravity, giving rise to the rocky planets. After the Sun formed, the solar wind also dragged the lighter materials out of the solar system, where the formation of the gas giants took place. <laughs>